Here, we are going to look at a construction that allows us to inscribe an ellipse inside a given rectangle. And to understand the rationale behind it, we will be looking at a simpler special case of this where a circle will be enclosed in a square. So suppose these are the semi-major and semi-minor axis of a circle. I am using this terminology to keep the parallel alive between the ellipse and the circle. But of course, these are the radii. And then these are the major and minor axis of the circle, essentially its diameters. And this is the circle that goes around it and this is the square in which it is supposed to be inscribed. Then we are going to include an angle in the right half of this circle and as you know the inscribed angle in a semicircle is a right angle. If this is a right angle then whatever is the angle between this line and the vertical will be same as the angle between its perpendicular and the horizontal and therefore these two angles are going to be the same. Now let us extend this chord until it hits the square. That gives us two uh, right angle triangles. And if you look closely, these two right angle triangles are congruent because they are both right angle triangles. Number one, one of their angles is equal and their sides over here, which are adjacent to the equal angles are also equal, essentially the radius of the circle. And therefore, even these sides that are opposite to the angles that we have marked as equal will also be equal. Then instead of giving them some arbitrary length, marking them some arbitrary label, I will say they are a certain fraction of this entire length or the radius. So let us say they are f multiplied by r, where f is a fraction. And this in fact gives us a procedure for plotting a circle. Suppose the circle was not given to us. Then how can we get a point on the circle? Well, take this square, take its midpoint of the side and draw an arbitrary line till it hits the adjacent side. That will create a certain fraction of the radius over here. Take that same fraction on this length and then connect that point to the midpoint of this side and extend that line till it hits the first line. And then as you keep changing these fractions, then uh, entire uh, circle can be generated. So let us implement this procedure. For that, I am going to divide this radius into equal parts. Of course, these parts need not be equal. They could be any arbitrary fractions. But to keep things simple, because they are to be repeated here also, I have taken equal parts, say five equal parts. Then I am going to divide this side also, this half side, into the same number of equal parts, five. And we will number them just to keep track of things. And we will number them here as well in uh, this downward order. And then we are going to draw a diverging set of lines. Some people also call this as a pencil. So from this midpoint, I have uh, drawn lines that connect to points one, two, three, four over here. Similarly, from this midpoint, I have drawn lines that connected to divisions one, two, three, four over here. And then we are going to extend this pencil till it meets the other pencil here and that too in a corresponding way that is this line number one I will extend till it hits line number one over here something like this so one meets one two and two three and three four and four and whatever points of intersection we get they are bound to be on the circle because the procedure that we followed uh, gave us points on the circle when these fractions were matching. So we will just take these points and connect them with a smooth curve. We will reflect that smooth curve about a vertical to get a semicircle and reflect the entire semicircle to get the remaining that is the entire circle. And now let us extend this procedure that we obtained for the circle to an ellipse. And that is really easy because what is an ellipse? An ellipse is nothing but a circle that is scaled in one direction. So I am going to take this circle and I am going to scale it, I am going to stretch it in the x direction suppose and we got a ellipse while everything else that we had in this procedure the essential parts like having these equal fractions on this side the same equal fractions on the other side uh, drawing these two sets of lines or pencils and making them intersect is all going to remain the same let's go over it once again suppose this is the rectangle given to us in which the ellipse is to be enclosed we'll draw the major and minor axis we will take half the major axis and divide it in equal parts, say five equal parts. This half side we will divide in the same number of equal parts. We will number these parts to keep track of things, go downward like this. Then we are going to draw the pencils. 
the set of lines that come from this midpoint joining these divisions and another is a pencil another set of lines that goes from this midpoint through these divisions up to the corresponding lines then we take the points of intersection of line 1 and 1 2 and 2 3 3 4 4 etc to mark these points and these points will be on ellipse this time because we have uh, taken the circle and we have stretched it so we'll just connect them with a smooth curve we'll reflect the curve to get other half and we will reflect it to complete it so this is the procedure for drawing a ellipse inside a given rectangle